got a phone call um, from one of our regional coordinators. And apparently, now IMOP is the Informed Medical Options Party. And uh, I'm a big fan of, uh, of what they represent. We're very much in alignment with that. Your body, your choice, you get to say what goes into it. And um, I, extended a, uh, I extended a friendly hand and uh, they just chose to spit on it, which is interesting. Because um, I think it was five members of IPOP turned up to a, an A1 supporter group meeting and demanded that they have the right to vote on, <laughs> on the positions within the supporter group, which I found funny and laughable. Yeah. They, they got their noses out of joint because of the Queensland state election. Yeah. Because apparently uh, I ran in the seat of the leader of the IMOP party. Yeah. And I tried to explain as gently as I could that unless the minor parties all contested as many seats as possible and fit each other the preferences, none of us would ever get up because there's no way that IMOP would get up with 50% plus one vote, which is required to win the seat. What she needed was as many minor parties to preference each other in order to get the numbers mm. to get up. That's exactly what Labor does. It puts up bogus um, parties parties, and, uh, yeah. and ca- independent candidates to direct preferences to them. It's, it's a game that they play. Like a nine of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but IMOP, IMOP and, their, and their erudite leader decided that this was an insult and she actually ran me up and insulted me and told me I had to ask her permission to run in her seat, which I thought was an interesting, if naive view of a, a political leader. But anyway, so they've decided that uh, they want to run. Um, they want, want to run a one now. We did some checking up, and it appears I can't verify this just yet, but it appears that IMOP's been penetrated by a major party, and they're doing to IMOP exactly what they did to One Nation and what they did to Fraser Rainey and what they did to everybody else. Yep. And so what they're doing is they're using other parties. They're using cutaways, shills, to uh, help attack a one to bring us down. Unfortunately, yeah. Um, you know, there's a difference between honest and naive. I'm honest but not naive, so we know exactly what's going on. So I'm up. I was happy to support you. You know, your, your philosophy's great. Unfortunately, you stink because you're too dumb. You're just too dumb. And I'm not upsetting the IMOP supporters. You people are good people, but your party's just too dumb to worth surviving. So I don't care anymore about IMOP. It's fine. We don't need them. It's very, right along. <laughs> it's very frustrating. It's very frustrating. Um, first off, that's exactly what a plant would say, Ricardo. You would tear other other good parties down, wouldn't you? That's <laughs> as I said. I extend my hand. <laughs> yeah, to the. People. I say hello until it's no longer worth my time and effort, and then I just drop it because I yeah. don't need them. They're a single issue party, and that's not a problem. Having a single issue party. Yeah, that can be effective. But when you're as stupid as that, yeah. Okay, well done. We've talked about this phenomena with the psychology of people drawn to power. Uh, and we know how power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely from um, George um, George Orwell. Why is it, and like we've covered this in the past with um, Fred Nile and his party and how that's imploding, and I hope they go through a uh, a renewal, but I just don't have a lot of faith in, in these party leaders. It's, it's very frustrating, and people get, a lot of people get very disillusioned with parties and they don't like committing to any because they see how the very people that get drawn to power are so corrupt. But what they don't realise is, and maybe we'll finish the show with this, they don't realise that if you don't get involved, this is going to happen. It's the inevitable conclusion. Mm. What's, your, what's your take on all this? Why is it so many of these parties employed like this? Is it always... Oh, no, look, I understand. Look, let's, let's break it down into, the, into the, the punters out there that just want a decent party that they can trust to, to look after their best interest. And I understand why they are utterly... Shattered. They've been, they've been let down. They've been betrayed over and over and over and over again for decades. And as we were saying before the show, they're now voting for a jersey. Mm. That, see, in the old days, you'd play for a team because, you know, you knew Ray Price for Parramatta and Ray was a, <laughs> God, a hard man. And Peter Sterling, these were, these were Parramatta players through and through. And so it was a connection with the player. Now, for those younger people in the audience, you won't know Ray Price or Peter Sterling. But watching those two turn up, the sort of guys that have a, a beer and a cigarette at halftime and go out and crack skulls again. <laughs> the league in the old days <laughs> it was brutal. But anyway, he used to play for a – used to follow the team because the team and the people. Yeah. But these days, it's – it's there's no loyalty. You know, they just they, – they chop and change and you start to play for a jersey. Well, what's happened with the Liberal Party, the Labor Party, the Nationals, and not so much the Greens because they've been dead for a long time. 
But you're voting for a coloured jersey now because the players aren't the players that they used to be. Yeah. They're not. Yeah. And so the, the, the average elector out there sort of looks at the blue and they go, oh, I vote Liberal. But then if they knew who was wearing that jersey, they wouldn't vote for them. Oh, I vote Labor. I vote for Red. If they knew who was in the jersey, they wouldn't vote for them. Yeah. And so those people are utterly disenchanted. Yeah. And I get it. It hurts. And, and, and that's what motivated me to do this. I didn't want this job. I li- literally didn't want it. You had a great life. Oh. The travelling and... Man, and oh, man, I can tell you, you can pick an easier profession. Yeah. But somebody had to do it because nobody was doing it. And, and we, you know, we put our faith in various people and most recently Corey Bernardi and that didn't work and I just thought, you know what? But it does attract... It does attract a particular type of person... It's, it's the person who wants the job that shouldn't get the job, if that makes sense. It was Thomas Solo, if you don't mind me butting in. He's, sure. He said that um, if you enjoy board meetings, you shouldn't be in politics. Oh. <laughs> it's like power. It's like they never had power before, but they've re- you've usurped it. It's like you were bullied in school, so you became a lawyer so you could bully other people. It's, it's extraordinary. So the people who are attracted to politics, by and large... Who want, who want to get in. And this is one of the reasons we had to set up our own party because all the other parties were popular by people. Their primary objective was to get a job on the executive or whatever they set up. Yeah. Malcolm Turnbull, I want to be pre- Prime Minister. Yeah, which party? Don't care. There you go. <laughs> you know, they just want it. They just want it. During, during the talks, it, when I'm, I'm explaining the purpose, method, end state, and I did it on the show, and there's an end and a means to an end. And the analogy I used was um, if you are trying to resolve a siege hostage situation, is your mission to save the lives of the hostages mm-hmm. or kill the terrorists? Yeah. Now, one's an end and one is a means to an end. Yeah. I've got so many advice from people saying, you've got to get into power. That's your first objective. No, my objective is to save Australia. Getting into power is a means to an end. Yeah. And that's what they don't get. I get so many people telling me how to get into power. I know how to get into power. That's easy. Take the money. Bend over and satisfy somebody else's needs. No, 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 no. That's why, and we were warned, and I'm happy with it, this is going to take longer to get going than we would like because we don't, it's not about getting into power. It's about saving the country. And as I said to you before when I explained our lines of operation, mm. we could feasibly achieve our strategic intention and never get one member of parliament elected. Yeah. That's how it's, you know, politics is the most visible but least critical line of operation to our success and that's the test mm. we don't care we'll get in because it accelerates the process and you know you get into power you can do things faster yeah but it's the least it's the most visible but least critical and so unfortunately politics attracts the people that want power yeah. a1 is about attracting people who want to save the country yeah. and and when they ring up and say oh look you know they'll send me their cv or they'll run down who they are and what they've done i say you're perfect as a candidate, and they'll say, but I know nothing about politics. And I say, even better. <laughs> You're not corrupted <laughs> the by The last it. things we need yeah. are more politicians and more lawyers. No, go away, yeah, please. It's, it's the definition of insanity. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got, which is this. It's crap. It doesn't work for the progressives. It doesn't work for the conservatives. We, we're not going to move forward, you know? There's one, we've got one job to do. That's save the country. But that's everybody's job. And that's when I was talking about you've got to transition from being the guerrilla army to the conventional army. You've got to transition from being the digital warrior to the physical warrior. You've got to take an interest in your school curriculum. You've got to take an interest in the planning for your local council. You've got to take an interest in fill in the blank. You've got to do it, folks, because it will be taken from you. Like they're taking Australia Day. You can't have Australia Day, but you can have Invasion Day dawn service. Yeah, speak up. This, say this is outrageous. That's the last line. You're not getting back in if you do this. Speak, you know, speak uh, your mind. I'm in the process of, of writing the Australia Day address that I'm going to record shortly. Mm. And um, I was bouncing it back, backwards and forwards, a couple of different approaches. And that, that newspaper article about the Australia Day being cancelled, but sorry, day order is dawn service. It, I'd made my mind up what I was going to do. And um, I won't talk about the theme now, but it's confirmed exactly what the, what the theme of this year's Australia Day Address must be because this is going to be the last one unless we are very, very, very careful. Unless Australians start to realise that they have to stand up and start knocking on their MP's door, start getting involved in school curriculum, start getting involved in planning, start getting involved in every aspect of political life to the level at which you are comfortable. 
You've got to physically get involved now. You've got to turn up to meetings and put a finger in somebody's face and say, like I've done over and over and over again, Mm. and say, the curriculum is wrong. Why are you teaching kids to masturbate and not teaching them their times tables? And if that means the local bishop, then do it if you're a Catholic, just for for information purposes. Go for it. They work for you. Sovereignty lies with every individual Australian. And I love saying it because it really gets the audience's attention. It doesn't matter if you're a millionaire from Point Piper or a prostitute from Emerald. You are equal. That's it. You are absolutely equal. Now, you might not be as smart. You may not be as rich. It doesn't make any difference. Either every one of us is is of equal worth Mm. or not. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Yeah. And if we're not, well, 